If you're watching this video, then I'm assuming that you're about to take your PE power exam. So congratulations on reaching one of the final stages of your PE licensing process. In this video, we're going to go over PE power exam preparation tips for experienced professionals who've been out of school for a while. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already done so. As an experienced professional, you have quite a few advantages going into the PE Power exam. The first and foremost is that you have industrial experience. Now, PE Power exam, as compared to the FE Electrical and Computer exam, is really focused on just power systems engineering. So if you have field experience, if you have design experience, if you have commissioning experience, any industry specific experience, it is going to actually help you. And the one section where your industrial experience is going to help you a lot is codes and standards. So if you have experience with NEC, NESC, NFP 70E, hazardous savior classification, all of that is going to carry over and immensely help you with your PE power exam preparation because codes and standards actually form a significant portion anywhere between 17 to 20% of the entire exam. So having experience with codes and standards is a big plus. But you also have some disadvantages. The fact that you've been out of school for a while, but if you took your FE exam recently, then my assumption is that you are still in that exam preparation mode and you have momentum on your side. And if you took your FE exam a while back, then essentially you need to get into the exam preparation mode. You need to um, start studying, developing that rhythm, developing that momentum. Now, considering these strengths and weaknesses that you typically would have as an experienced professional, I've prepared a list of tips and recommendations that can help you prepare for this exam effectively and efficiently. My first recommendation is to familiarize yourself with the CPT format. If you already took your FE exam in the CPT format, that's great. But if you're not familiar with the computer-based testing format, then it is very important that you spend a little bit of time and understand the key features and the requirements of the CPT format. It actually has a lot of advantages if you know how to use it properly. My PE Power Exam Preparation course contains a computer simulated full length practice exam, which allows the students to practice the CPT format just like the actual exam, morning and afternoon sessions, 40 questions in the morning, 40 questions in the afternoon. They're able to sort of navigate back and forth between the questions. There's a timer. They're able to flag the questions. So if it is something that you're not familiar with, then my recommendation is to take some time and understand the features of the CBD format. My tip number two for you is to develop familiarity with the NCSP Power Reference Handbook. That's correct. Just like the FE Electrical and Computer exam, now, the PE Power exam, as I mentioned earlier, is also computer based and you will be provided NCSP Power Reference Handbook. So you don't need to memorize anything and it is no longer an open book exam. So everything that you need to know from equations point of view, from formulas point of view, some definitions as well is contained in the NCSP Power Reference Handbook. But it doesn't mean that you can just simply look at the reference handbook and then plug and play because PE Power exam is in depth. It really tests you on your core understanding rather than surface level learning, which you could probably get by with that electrical and computer exam. So knowing the NCSP Power Reference Handbook is going to do two things for you. First of all, it will sort of provide you a more defined scope of what this exam entails because some of these concepts are fairly open-ended, but the formulas and the equations and the content that is provided in the NCSP Power Reference Handbook can allow you to sort of focus in and zone in on the topics uh, related to that concept so that you can effectively prepare for the exam. The second thing is that it can save you a lot of time because you don't have to sort of go back and forth. Once you know where the particular concept is discussed, where the particular equation is, you can just jump right into it and make use of that formula, make use of that knowledge piece and apply it to the problem that you're trying to solve. So it will help you fast track and streamline your exam preparation, give you focus and clarity, and at the same time, help you save a lot of time on the exam. My tip number three is to aim for in-depth understanding. As I mentioned earlier, P Power exam really tests you on your core understanding as compared to the F electrical and computer exam. So you need to make a conscious effort to learn the concepts inside out. Now, it can be a little bit frustrating 
if you're learning something new, but hopefully once you go through the specification, you'll see that at some point in your career, you would have probably dealt with some of those concepts. You probably would have applied actually some of uh, those knowledge areas in your day to day job, or at the very least back in your undergraduate studies or graduate studies, you probably would have taken a course or two on those concepts. So now if things are a little bit rusty, I would recommend you to make use of an effective exam preparation a resource like my on demand P power exam preparation course, which will walk you through the entire specification starting from general power engineering all the way to protection and control. I actually go through every concept in quite a bit of depth. If you have taken my IP electrical and computer exam preparation course, you will see that there's a difference between P power exam preparation and FE electrical and computer exam preparation. In FE electrical and computer exam preparation course, the challenge is to sort of cover 17 sections and tons and tons of concepts. And the other challenge with FE electrical and computer exam is that you only get three minutes, whereas for P power exam, you will have six minutes per problem which is great, but that also means that you have to be able to sort of dive into the concept in a lot of detail and handle them appropriately. So in my on-demand P power exam preparation course, you will see lectures involving derivations, lectures involving uh, solved problems. At the end of each lecture, there's a quiz, and I try and make sure that every complicated, abstract, complex concept is explained in as simple terms as possible. In fact, a lot of students who take my P power exam preparation course, they tell me that some of the abstract and convoluted concepts such as symmetrical components, per unit systems, and fault analysis, it's the first time that they're really getting a good understanding of these concepts by going through these lectures. So it will not only help you prepare for the exam, but hopefully also help you lay that solid foundation as a power systems engineer and serve you well for the rest of your career. My fourth and final tip for experienced professionals is to try and maintain your exam preparation momentum. I understand that as an experienced professional, somebody who's been out of school for a long time working in the industry already, you have a lot of professional and personal commitments. So arguably the biggest challenge for you is to keep your exam preparation on track, keep yourself motivated to keep putting in a consistent number of hours every single week and make sure that you are making progress along the way. And I've also created a separate video which discusses typical challenges that are encountered by students who are preparing for the PE power exam. And I'll include a link in the description of this video as well. At the end of this video, I'd like to remind you that you're just one step away from your PE license. And as an experienced professional, you already know the value of PE license within your industry, within your company. So my recommendation is to try and implement the tips and suggestions that I made in this video, and hopefully it will help you fast track your exam preparation. And in case you're looking for an exam preparation resource that can handhold you through the entire process and streamline your exam preparation effort, I recommend you to check out the link for my on-demand P-Power exam preparation course in the description of this video. Thank you.